Okay, in my last video I showed you how to install OS 7.5.3 and now I'm going to show you how to update it to OS 7.5.5. Um, this is only applicable if you did the easy install. I have had reports that custom installs fail miserably. I did not attempt to do one myself. So uh, if you did, best of luck to you. So as you can see, we have our 7.5.3 system up and running. Now one thing you're going to need to get your hands on is a copy of disk copy 6.3.3.smi. I'll post the link to where I got my copy from in the description for this particular video. Um, everything else that we have here is pretty much the same. Our shared folder, we don't need those disks sitting in there anymore. So I'm going to create a new folder underneath there and call it system 753 just for archiving purposes. Highlight those and move those into it. In case I do need them again later on while I'm using the operating system, it'd be nice to have them available. What I did go ahead and get is OS 7, oh, wrong folder, OS 7.5. <clears throat> okay, three disks, the .c files. .c needs to be extracted. Uh, Mac OS X doesn't know how to do it. However, Mac OS 7 does. So we're going to grab those three and we're going to put those into share. So I need to make those available to the guest. I also need to make the disk copy available to the guest. So we're going to put that in there as well. I can close this out. Okay. And now we're back into the guest. So we're going to go to the Unix drive, <clears throat> which as I said is our actual guest drive. And I want to clean up this view a little bit because it's a little bit messy in there. There we go. Alright, disk copy will not run on a non-HFS drive. So in order to work disk copy, we actually have to open it from here. So we open up our Mac HD and we grab disk copy and we just do a drag and drop. And then we're going to run this. And it's mounted it. Interesting. Yeah, apparently my computer does not like doing uh, these videos at the same time as trying to do other stuff anymore. There it goes. Wow. That was weird. Okay. So apparently the i5 isn't everything it's cracked up to be. <laughs> I'm kidding. Alright, so we need the uh, disk copy file now. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to drag it over here. Alright. I don't need this anymore, so I'm going to close that. Okay, we're going to open the disk copy. Oh, yes. Forgot. Key point to mention. Unmount the image. And if you don't remember how to do that in older OS's, you have to drag it to the trash can, and that unmounts it. Alright, so, now we'll run the program. There we go. And we'll create the licensing. Okay, this is a drop window. Drag and drop an image into the window, it mounts it. Now right now our images are .c files, so we're going to take image 1, and we're going to double click on it. I can do that without editing the text on it. There we go. Stuff Expander is going to do its thing. Okay, 
Okay, now we're going to do file 2. Now, if you'll note, they're not showing up. That's okay. I know they're there. Oh, there we go. That was not good. Normally it's not this unstable. It probably has something to do with the fact that I have something chewing up my CPU usage. And look, it's QuickTime Player. Big surprise. 87% of my CPU cycles. All right, so we're going to reopen disk copy. Okay, we're going to try to reopen disk copy. I don't know why I'm having so much problem with that. This has not been an issue before with, uh, maybe it's something to do with emulation versus, uh, versus screen recording. I don't know, but this is, uh, this is a much faster process when you're not recording it on the screen, and it's a lot more stable. I actually have not had it crash before up until now. As you can see, disk 1 and disk 2 are extracted. Disk 3 crashed me, so I'm going to try disk 3 again. And there's our Happy Aladdin thing. We're going to hit continue. We're going to hit save. Okay, good. <clears throat> now, what I was going to show you before, disk 1 and disk 2 are now showing up because we closed this and reopened it. Now all three of them are there. So, one at a time, drag them over, and mount them with disk utility. So there's disk 1. We can close, we don't need that up. Disk 2. Yes, you do need to mount all three. And disk 3. And I will show you why in a second. So we're going to go to disk 1. And we're going to run the installer. Okay, and we want to upgrade Macintosh HD to 7.5.5. Hit install. Now it's going to complain that we have open programs, so we're just going to tell it to go ahead and close those. Hence why you need to have all three disks mounted at once, so that this thing, because it's going to close the image mounting software. And there we go. Cannot take place while other applications are running, blah, blah, blah. Hit continue, it closes them. Now the installer has detected all three disks are mounted. So it is now going to go through and using those three mounted images, update the OS 7.5.3 install to 7.5.5. And now it wants to do its restart. And there you have it. We are now running 7.5.5. So uh, my apologies for the technical glitches there. As you guys have seen up here at the top, I've had a CPU meter going, and I'm running pretty consistently at an average 90-something percent CPU power. Uh, Memory is not an issue, as you can tell. <laughs> so I think it has to do with the uh, recording going on at the same time as this virtualization layer. Um, as you can see, QuickTime is definitely chewing up a lot of CPU cycles. So. Um, again, notwithstanding that, it's usually usually pretty stable. I haven't had any problems with it thus far. So uh, enjoy. I'll be posting a video fairly shortly on how to do OS 9 with something called Sheep Shaver uh, once I get that system set up myself.